We're back now at 741. What would you do if you were swimming in the ocean and you saw a shark? Most people would swim in the opposite direction, but one guy might reach out and give it a hug. NBC's Kevin Tibbles sunk his teeth into this story. As unreal as this may appear, that is a real shark in the middle of the ocean, and the man hugging it is filmmaker Rob Stewart. You know, for a nerdy little kid that loves sharks, it was quite difficult to get anywhere near them. And, uh, and I thought that that was quite a contrast to the world saying they're going to kill you. Stewart spent five years and his life savings making his film Shark Water, hoping to change the way people think about what he calls the most misunderstood creature on Earth. Boy was playing in shallow water when he was attacked. Not an easy task when each time a human is bitten, the shark is portrayed as public enemy number one. And in Hollywood films like Jaws, the shark's role is of the man-eating monster from the deep. People believe that that animal exists when it actually doesn't. So what happened after Jaws is people started killing sharks around the world because people were, you know, saving humanity by wiping off this villain. That assault has wiped out 90% of the world's shark population. Then scourge you the ocean, and everyone should go and catch one. Demand for shark fin soup, a pricey delicacy in Asia, has left us with these haunting images. Sharks slaughtered for their fins and dumped alive back into the ocean. Stewart fears taking out the ocean's number one predator could devastate our ecosystem. In addition to his award-winning film, he travels from school to school on perhaps the most no difficult PR on. campaign ever. After all, unlike panda bears, sharks aren't warm and cuddly. The reality with most shark attacks is that they're not shark attacks. There's no intent by the shark to do a human harm. They, they bite and they realize they made a mistake and they let go. That's why I call them shark mistakes. And his message is getting through. Now we realize that be it's kids like this he's hoping will create momentum. Here, a totally new relationship. Shift people's paradigms right away. And with this hug, Rob Stewart hopes to change the shark's killer image forever. For today, Kevin Tibbles, NBC News, Toronto. And Rob Stewart joins us live in the studio. Hey, Rob, good to see you. Thanks for you having me. You describe yourself in the piece a nerdy kid who always loved sharks. Did you always love them? Wasn't there a time in your life like most kids and most people when you feared them? Yeah, absolutely. When I was a young kid, you know, I'd seen Jaws, I'd seen media headlines, and sharks were, you know, that thing that everybody feared when they went to play in the ocean. What changed your mind? What, what made you decide that you needed to kind of get on a campaign Never seen on the other side? I spent enough time underwater with them. You know, I spent a lot of my childhood ripping around in the ocean trying to uh, investigate, looking for sharks, and, and I never saw them. It was very rare to actually encounter one in the natural world. When I did see one, it didn't want anything to do with me, and that made me wonder why. So five years and a lot of money to, to create this documentary. During, you know, I guess a lot of people are going to say we're only going to hear about the stuff where nothing happened. Did you not have any close calls at moments like these while you were trying to film this? Never a close call with sharks. I mean, we spend sometimes 200 days a year underwater with sharks and never a problem. But in the movie, you'll see people are way more dangerous than sharks. Give, give me an example. I mean, I know that the, the trials of making the movie out of the water were much more difficult than what you encountered in the water. Yeah, absolutely. I started out trying to make a pretty underwater movie about sharks. And then three weeks into the film, the conservation ship that I was on, one run by an organization called Sea Shepherd, collided with a fishing boat in Guatemala. We ended up getting charged with attempted murder in Costa Rica. Figuring out that the mafia was behind that and ending up having to run from Costa Rica. And you're going, I'm just trying to make a movie here. <laughs> it's just a, it's supposed to be a shark film. So we ended up running while the Coast Guard's chasing us with machine guns, and it turned into a really different, you know, human drama with a shark movie intertwined into your, it. Your message, the movie clearly has a message, and it's that we need to kind of turn this thing upside down and look at sharks differently. But, but I'm curious what you're encouraging people to do. Would you encourage people to do what you did and get that close to sharks? No, not at all. I mean, you don't want to go up and, you know, embrace any wild animal, be it, you know, the business end of a beaver or a shark. You know, you, you don't want to do that. But what we're trying to show is that the reality is totally different. I mean, most shark attacks are shark mistakes. When they bite, you know, they make a mistake, they realize they got something they didn't want, they let go. It's really rare for flesh to actually be removed. And, you know, right now, shark populations are being decimated around the world. And, and, and look into your crystal ball, and if, and if we don't change the way we view sharks, and if the killing continues, whether it's for sport or whether it's as a delicacy or out of fear, what do you see happening in the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years? 70% of the world's oxygen comes from plankton in the oceans. 
which is part of the food web which sharks you know inherently control as the biggest predators and the oceans are also the greatest sink or the greatest consumer of carbon dioxide which everyone claims is the global warming gas we have on the planet so disrupting the ecosystems that we depend on for survival could be absolutely disastrous and the oceans feed most of the planet so it's uh, it's a system we really simply can't mess with. And, and it's an uphill battle because as as much as a, as some I would cons I guess you consider yourself a conservationist. As someone as much as conservationists are trying to save things like the sharks, there are a lot of people who are resisting this effort because they're making a lot of money. Absolutely, yeah. Off as, soon sharks. As, as soon as you get a fishery like sharks, you know you get money, you get investment from banks, and then people have to start turning in the resource. And because of that, you know shark populations are absolutely decimated around the world, and nobody seems to notice. Like they would for pandas or bears. Well, this might get people to sit up and take notice. You spent five years on this. What's your next project? Who making conservation cool and accessible to everybody? You know, it's got to be cool to become a conservationist and you know perpetuate human life on Earth. It's not uh, it's not sharks or the oceans that we need to save now. It's you know the very short span humans have survived on the planet that we need to be worrying about. Rob Stewart, it's fascinating stuff. Thanks for being here. I appreciate it. Thanks. And by the way, Sharkwater opens in theaters here in the U.S. this coming September. The documentary will be available on DVD sometime around Christmas. And up next, from sharks to...